Hi, I'm Adam Lane Smith, and today I'm going to talk to you about making friends. <laughs> making friends is the number one question I got from many people when they started fixing their attachment. They would say, Adam, I need three people in my life who have good attachment. And I'd say, yeah, that's great. But where do you find three people? Sometimes people have one. Sometimes people have none. Sometimes people feel alone. I saw a joke recently that said Jesus performed many miracles, but one of his biggest miracles was having 12 close friends in his 30s. And that is true for our modern world. Having close friends after high school seems like a pipe dream for many. Many people struggle to make those friends. And there's a reason for that. We make it complicated. We forget how we made friends in the first place, and we get really self-conscious, and we think nobody's going to want to be our friend. Some of that comes from attachment, believing that we have nothing to offer other people. Sometimes it's from very mild attachment issues, and we think, well, I think I have some things to offer, but nobody seems to like me very much, and I don't have any friends. What should I do? There's ways to fix that. I have a system. It is very, very, very simple to make friends as an adult. You just have to remember how you did it in kindergarten. And if you never did it in kindergarten, I'm going to teach you now. The way you make friends is to go places where people are doing things you like doing. So you might need to build a hobby. A lot of people who don't have friends also don't have hobbies. Or they have hobbies who, that have no social element to them whatsoever. So you need, first of all, to develop a hobby that has a social component. That can be anything. And it can look like anything. If you are into quilting, go places where other people are quilting. Go places where other people are having quilting conventions, where it's a quilting store, whatever it might be. Go places where people are doing those activities, and you'll start the process. So build a hobby that has a social engagement. It could be dancing. If you're going to dance, you're probably going to go to a class, and the people in that class probably like dancing. That'd be great. A cooking class. Cooking. Martial arts. The gym can work. It's a little tougher because people there have the headphones on and they want to be left alone. But the gym can work. Hobbies, though. You need to go places where people have hobbies that you have because then the people there will automatically share your interests. So if and when you become friends with them, you have something to do together. Automatically. It's built right into the relationship from the start. If you are trying to make friends at the bar, your relationship will be built on being at the bar. And that's not much of a relationship because that's a relate. That's a location specific friendship. That's what they sometimes call a single serving friend, according to Fight Club. You don't want single serving friends. You want lifelong friends, which means they're going to have to share hobbies that are interesting to you because then you can do them together and talk about things. You have something built in right there to talk about. And if you're better at the hobby and knowledgeable and good and, and you have those skills, you have things to talk about and value to offer and insights to offer. And you can critique each other's works and share interests and share those resources back and forth. And that's a basis for a friendship. Friendship isn't just random. Friendship has a purpose, typically. There's benefits to it, at least if you want to deepen that friendship. So you go, you build a hobby that has a social element of some kind. You go where people are doing that, and you do that hobby there with other people. And you start talking to other people there about the hobby you are doing. Saying, hey, I like your work that you did. That's really impressive. Could you show me how to do that? Hey, what do you think of this that I just did? Hey, did you see that recent seminar about quilting? Whatever it might be, you strike up conversations about the hobby. And you talk to them a little bit. And when they are receptive, you keep talking to them. If they're, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Then you know that person is not looking for a social engagement, even though they're there doing it. They probably will be receptive. Otherwise, they'll be at home doing that hobby. If they are out and about, and if they're your age, odds are good they probably don't have friends either, and they're doing exactly what I'm teaching you right here, which is going out with a social hobby and finding other people to connect with and make friends. They're probably there in the same boat that you are. If you don't have friends, you're not the only human being on earth who doesn't have friends. Because, again, I would get this question so many times in therapy. This is what people are looking for. So you strike up that conversation. You start talking to them about it. And you guys have a good conversation. At the end of it, you say, hey, would you like to be friends? Now, that sounds stupid. That sounds juvenile. It is. It goes back to kindergarten. That's how kindergartners make friends. So people in elementary school make friends. They start talking about a hobby. 
They like it, and they both enjoy the conversation, and they want to do the hobby together more, so they become friends. And a lot of times they will say, are we friends? Can we be friends? Can I have your phone number? Can I come to your house? It's that simple. It's only complicated because we are self-conscious and think people will laugh at us. If somebody asked to be your friend and said, hey, you and I both enjoy this hobby together. Would you like to be friends? Would you laugh at them? Would you think, wow, what a dumb question. What an idiot. What a loser. Why would they ask to be friends? No, you would probably say, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I am so glad you asked me that. I would love to be your friend. You're not going to meet too many people who say, no, you know what? Thank you, but no, I have too many friends already. You're going to say, people will say, yes, please. Yeah, that'd be great. Here's my phone number. Hey, let's text each other. Now we have our numbers. That's the key. That's the key. It's that simple. It is getting rid of your self-consciousness and just asking. I know because I've taught this for years and I do it myself. When I meet something, someone really interesting with a cool hobby that I share, I say, hey, would you like to be friends? And their eyes light up and they say, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to have a friend. I don't have very many friends. I came here looking for one. Wow, what a coincidence. So did I. That's the magic. And you can do this even when you have one friend. You can do this when you have 50 friends. You can still say, hey, would you like to be friends? How about we swap numbers? Let's talk about this quilting more often. Or dancing or cooking or axe throwing, whatever it might be. Let's do this more. It's that simple. It really is that simple. And if it sounds terrifying, it's because you think people will say no. You think someone is going to laugh at you for offering to be friends. You think someone is going to say, no, you don't have anything I want. Why would I be your friend? That tends to come from attachment. That tends to come from feeling rejected. That tends to come from feeling like your own parents don't feel super close to you. So why would other people want to? Sorry if that's a gut punch. But that's where that comes from. You fix that by fixing your attachment, but you also fix that by building your interest and knowledge in the hobby so that you do have something to offer, something concrete. You can offer great conversation about that shared hobby. And because your relationship is built around that shared hobby, at least at first, you have tons of value to offer. You just have to go online and learn about it. You can learn about it here on YouTube. You can learn about it on TikTok. You can learn about it on Wikipedia. You can learn about it anywhere. And then when you go to those places, you can teach cool methods and people will adore you for it. And you will have 10 friends there instead of one friend. That's the magic. That is how you make adult friends in your 30s. As many times as you want. That's how you stop being alone. And that's how you build the three people you need for good attachment. That's how you build the 10 people you need for a whole village. That's how you build a life full of friends. It works. It works really, really well. Try it. If you're struggling to find friends, this is your way. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. I'm Adam Lane Smith, Attachment Specialist. Thank you for watching.